Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about anonymous inner classes and specifically one that uh, really just essentially extends an interface. I'm going to open up my web browser to javacjava.com and hit begin. And I'm gonna scroll down here to anonymous inner implements. We're gonna learn about anonymous inner classes that implement an interface. So an anonymous inner, inner class is a nested class defined without any name. An anonymous class is entirely dependent upon either a superclass or an interface in order to work properly. Now this tutorial will focus on the version that is dependent upon an interface. You may also want to brush up on your runnable skills by watching my Creating a Thread Part 3 tutorial. Also, I highly recommend understanding all the concepts in my anonymous inner class extending a superclass tutorial as well. Okay, so what I've got here is this is basically, if you look at the runnable.java in the source code for the java.lang package, this is exactly how it's declared here. Public interface runnable, and then we got public abstract void run, right? Our abstract method right there. Now I've created this class tester here, and inside of the main method entry point, the first thing I'm doing is I'm I'm doing something that can't be done on this line right here, right? Runnable um, interface type reference variable r equals new runnable. We can't you know, create an instance of an interface. It's not allowed. We can only create an instance of a class, okay? So the anonymous inner class begins right here at this opening and ends right there at this closing brace. And then our semicolon kind of finishes out there. All right, I'm gonna talk a little bit about this here in this paragraph here. So in the example above, the anonymous inner class begins with the opening curly brace directly after the new runnable, right? Which is what I was saying right here. So it begins right here. The anonymous inner class ends at the closing curly brace directly before the semicolon above the statement new thread r dot start, right? So right there, okay? When new thread r, passing it the, uh, the reference variable r dot start is invoked, Right, this right here, right? The output to the console will be running, okay? And that's just basically because we're overriding the run method, which we're forced to do because we're implementing the runnable interface, okay? Um, now, of course, not very practical to start up a, a new thread just to display running to the console, but you know, for the purposes of this tutorial here, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then when I do the code stuff there, I'm gonna show you guys some, some cool stuff there that'll streamline some neat stuff. But anyway, so what purpose does anonymous inner class like the one above serve? Well, they are a fantastic shortcut when you simply wanna create an object that you can override an abstract method on without creating a bunch of cluttered up code. In my example above, we simply want to invoke the run method from the runnable interface. Now, how would we do that without using an anonymous inner class? Well, first we would need to create a brand new class that would implement runnable, right? Actually, it would be implements runnable, but anyway. Second, we would need to overwrite the run method, and you know, just to be thorough, we'd want to include the add override annotation. Finally, we need to create an instance of the new subclass and pass it as a parameter to the new thread object constructor, right? Right up here. We would then need to invoke the start method of the new thread instance. So as you can see, the anonymous inner class streamlines our code. Anonymous inner classes can show up in some unexpected places, and I'll demonstrate that in the video tutorial using the code below. Let's come down here and highlight the source code. Hit Control C to copy, right? Or uh, and uh, I'm going to move my browser off screen. You can also right click on that and select copy. Now I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one really fast by right clicking, selecting new shortcut, CMD, next, and finish. It's just that easy. If you're new to my tutorials, um, go ahead and type in Java C, which is a Java compiler command. You should see all this stuff scroll by. If you receive an error message, watch my tutorial on installing and configuring the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that done properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, cd space backslash cd is short for change directory backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm going to make a directory here called java with the md command. I already have that folder, but if you don't, I'll go ahead and create one for you. I'm going to make a directory here called uh, anonymous uh, inner and uh, interface. That's a doozy of a directory name there. But anyway, let's go ahead and change directory cd, and I hit tab, by the way. Um, 
And I'm on notepad tester.java, right? Tester.java is going to be the name of the source code file, also known as a compilation unit. Uh, yes, we'll create the file. Control V to paste or right click and select paste. All right, uh, let's come up here and save initially. Now, the first thing I've got up here is the public interface runnable with the public abstract void run method here. I've got that commented out because um, the runnable interface is part of the java.lang package, which is automatically imported. So if I hadn't commented this, we get an error, you know, duplicate something or other. I don't, don't know exactly what the error message would be, but it, it wouldn't be pretty. Anyway, so I've got two classes in here, tester and tester2. Both of them have main method entry points, and um, each one is going to demonstrate this a little bit differently there. All right, so the first thing let's do is let's just come up here and let's clear our screen. And I'm going to type in Java C and tester.java to compile that. We got no response back, so no error message, compiled just fine. Now I'm going to come here and I'm going to highlight uh, basically our anonymous inner class, okay? And I'm going to hit shift delete on the keyboard there. Now we can't do this. Runnable R equals new runnable, right? Um, that just doesn't, doesn't work, right? You can't create an instance out of a runnable object. Let's go ahead and compile this again, right? Runnable is abstract, cannot be instantiated is our error message that we get, okay? So I'm gonna do control Z to put that right back in there. And so this is our inner, um, our anonymous inner class. And it's called a class for a reason because it is a class, right? And we can instantiate a class. So what's going on here with the syntax? Well, basically, um, the new is creating a new class right here that R will point to this, this object of this anonymous inner class. The runnable syntax here basically means that this anonymous inner class will implement runnable, okay? Now, because it implements runnable, the at override, we can override the public abstract void, the abstract method up here with our own public void run. And um, yeah, I'm only gonna display, of course, that running to the console. So now R actually points to a legitimate instance of an object, right? And we can take that R and pass it into the constructor parameter for a new thread object, and then simply invoke the start method on that. So let's go ahead and save this. Let's come back up here. Let's compile this, clear our screen, and let's run it. Okay, so running, bada boom, bada bing. All right, so that wasn't too bad. That was actually much easier than creating a whole new class that implements runnable and creating an instance of that and then passing it in to there, right? Okay, now let's take it one step further and add a whole new level of confusion, but it's really cool confusion. Once you get through it, it's just like, oh, wow, okay. I can streamline this even more. So down here in, in tester two, we're essentially going to do this one line right here, okay? And I'll demonstrate that by simply highlighting all of this right here, which um, basically we're just passing this, uh, we're creating a, a just-in-time, a JIT object and passing it to as a, um, an argument into the thread constructor, right? And the thread constructor does have a single parameter um, value that takes a runnable instance as a parameter there. So I'm going to highlight this, hit shift delete. Okay. So we've got new thread dot start, which is the same as like this line up here, only we are missing our instance of a runnable object there, right? So control Z. So I'm doing new runnable, which is just essentially the same as that up there, right? And as you can see, I'm from this semicolon right here, right? Or I'm not semicolon, from this curly brace right here, opening curly brace to the closing curly brace, is our anonymous inner class. And because we're doing new runnable, we're actually implementing runnable, so we can override the run. Now this particular method here, in this, in this runnable, is actually gonna do something there on a, you know, a new thread. So um, this one will just basically uh, declare a uh, local variable into i and just a little while loop here while i is less than integer dot max value and then we'll display to the console the string little strange but cool syntax plus i plus plus right now um and then we're going to invoke the start method on this new thread and remember now this particular parenthesis right here the closing parenthesis is this one right up here from the new thread right the only thing up here that that's different 
is that we're putting in, of course, all of that, right? All right, so uh, save this. It's uh, probably no need to recompile it, but what the hey, anyway. Let's go to our screen. And we wanted to do, we want to invoke the tester2 class here, right? Okay, so tester2, you can see it's doing its thing and it's just, uh, it's looping through and it's doing it on, not on the main thread, it's doing it on a, on a, uh, on a new, on another thread. So um, everything is all cool on that. So if we just kind of put this aside over here, right? You can see that this is, this is actually, you know, really, really pretty cool as far as streamlining stuff here goes. All right, so I'm going to just kind of, um, I'm gonna get rid of this and I'm gonna, I'm gonna let that run while I kind of give you guys some final thoughts on this here. So now learning advanced concepts are meant to make your life easier by allowing you to streamline more basic operations, which is exactly what we're going on with that last one there. Now, this is another one of those tutorials where if you're new to the concept, then you should wait a day and let the concept sink in and watch the video again. I'm a believer that frustration and confusion are simply signs that you are learning. You know, as long as you don't give up, keep reviewing until you have your aha moment, you know, then move on to the next thing. So that's basically my, my philosophy as far as that goes. All right, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control C to terminate that program, forcibly terminate that program there. So, um, and I'm going to get this off screen, and that pretty much concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.